this video is about Patrick King. So, he made a very despicable claim at one point that in Black Lake, Saskatchewan, women and children were being dragged into the bushes by the military for forced medical procedures. This is, however, stated false by the Black Lake First Nations Band Office. They state he was lying, and the RCMP are currently investigating Patrick King, as this is false information, as confirmed there by Martin Brosu when he made a call to the RCMP. This is a deceptive headline on the Stu Peters show here, where it says, The case of Patrick King versus Alberta Health Services has been over alternative media, and the measures, as in public health measures, remain in effect, though it's not entirely clear from the video the result of the case, but he does admit that he lost. So this date, May 4th, 2021, that's when the trial began. He got an adjournment so that he could subpoena Dina Henshaw, which is the chief medical officer of Alberta. But later it was discovered that although a justice of the peace did sign one, it required the signature of a judge, which is a procedural error. So therefore, the document is defective in the eyes of the court. And the Crown brought an application on July 16th to quash the subpoena with a hearing date of July 19th. On the May 4th trial, King had tried to challenge the constitutionality of the measures themselves, but never filed a notice of constitutional question, which he says didn't know had to be done in advance, supposedly. And King implies that his own $1,200 ticket was thrown out, but interestingly, the ruling isn't posted, and he later admits that he lost. And he is right that this whole thing is a scam. However, there's no justification or assertion that his trial had any effect on any of the public health measures at all whatsoever. And Patrick King is making his rounds claiming that freedom was won for Albertans by this. And Stu Peters did interview him, but he pretty much neglected to do research if he put a headline like what I showed you. And there's no ruling posted on Canley either. And here, I just want to say that there's a transcript of his August hearing floating around. But the transcript, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It stated that there's a transcript of his August hearing to get in writing the admission he wants. That's fair, but the transcripts floating around are from the May 4th appearance, which isn't the same thing. And the transcript was attached as an exhibit in Alberta's application to Quash. Here's a photo of him and Kellyanne Wolf we've been staring at for too long. And as Patrick King stated to Dan Dix of Press for Truth, I wasn't successful. No, I did not win the court case. I mean, at least he came around to telling the truth, right? And Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms did their own investigation of the case here. And it says that there is no indication of any of the restrictions in Alberta and reopening on July 1st, 2021 having to do with any anything having to do with Pat King. They give their own propaganda reasons for this in order to continue the insanity, but that's a whole other story. And Brett, Boy, Brett Boyden, communications advisor for the Officer of Public Health, for the Office of the Health, uh, Health Minister of Alberta, told Reuters via email in a statement that the court squashed the subpoena, and Mr. King has ultimately been found guilty of the offense at trial and sentenced to pay a fine. This is the United We Roll Convoy, the Yellow Vests. It was supposed to be about pipelines, and uh, but it became more about immigrants, refugees, and the UN. Now, how did this happen? Those involved said their concerns were primarily about the oil and gas industry, but we'll learn it was more than that, because at every convoy, there was also a stop and focus on immigration and refugees and the role of the UN, as well as what they call Canadian sovereignty. That statement doesn't make sense, and we'll get to that. Another article about them, parroting, or perhaps parodying, the Yellow Vest movement in France. Hundreds of similarly dressed protesters began taking up Alberta's streets in the weeks leading up to Christmas of 2018. Their grievances appear to mirror a, a politician in France and the uh, President Emmanuel Macron's choice to increase carbon taxes, particularly on diesel and gasoline. That's what the yellow vests 
sort of are like on the surface, but they've been seen with the soldiers of Odin at different points, and I don't know if I don't know how closely related the two are, or if they're even affiliated with one another directly. But the soldiers of Odin, or the SOO, were founded in 2015 in, in the northern Finnish town of Kemi, but they quickly spread from Sweden to Denmark, and later to Germany, UK, France, Belgium, and Ireland. And in 2016, they made their way to the US and Canada. Moving down to page three here. The leader, Mike Ranta, is self-described as a national socialist, which is what we would call a Nazi, and he sports the tattoos and whatnot to go with it. Just scrolling down to page six over here. When the group first emerged in Canada, it was very quickly identified by law enforcement and community groups as right-wing extremism on the basis of its shared icon iconography of the Finnish group. Uh, the Canadian founder and president, Joel Angut, sought to dispel this conception, claiming that what they do in Finland and in Europe, they have all sorts of different issues altogether. That's not really what we are. We're an independent charter of Soldiers of Odin. We're a community watch group. So this is what it appears like on the surface and that there's a lot of divide within the SOO in itself. So I can't really give you a clear answer as to whether their ideology is strictly the same as in Finland or not. So this is now resuming the conversation about Patrick King and the First Nation. So in this video from a minute 13 onward, he is basically very vulgar about First Nations blocking trains, not allowing goods and services into Canada, and wreaking havoc across the country. Um, and in this one here, there's a Twitter post that I'm just going to scroll past because uh, there's some coarse language, unfortunately. However, according to the Twitter post of Taylor McNally's, she or he, she, I don't know her pronoun and don't really care, but claiming, she found a post where Pat King is claiming to be 40% indigenous and he is using elders to drum or speak at rallies, so he's exploiting uh, the First Nations community as a whole. And this right here, Patrick King um, lied at one point claiming that he was a war veteran, and the thing is, is his behavior in this video is very childish, where he says that the, the silly childhood schoolyard stuff I thought was gone, is what he says. However, if you ended up lying about being a war veteran, that's the kind of thing that will come back and bite you, and people have the full right to question whether you are sorry or not, or have made amends or not. It's unfortunate, Pat, but that's just the way things are. So, according to Martin Brousseau, he had a veteran's bank account to, uh, to support veterans in need. His claim he never accepted money for, uh, from vets is false, so there's another lie within the video. And he also claims, Pat King claims to have apologized to Martin Brousseau, and that Martin Brousseau apologized as well. However, this is Martin Brousseau's response. I never apologized to Pat Scan King. What did I do is, like, I can respect my enemy. I also shook Trudeau's hand respectfully, like I shook my enemy's hand, Pat Scan King, as I can respect. He does the best he can with the information he has, even though I know he is wrong. I don't know if he does the best with the information he has, but... Anyway, here is... I'm going to read his long comment. Martin Brousseau says, I didn't go, I refused to go to Ontario to help Pat scam money, so Pat started yelling everyone. He was a special forces soldier when he lost his leg in Afghanistan. Two, yes, I was in court spring 2019, as couldn't afford to pay my lawyer Tom Engel the many previous months at that time. I had to take carriage of my lawsuit against the RCMP spring 2019, 
I had to explain to the judge why I deserved more time to prepare a document to keep my lawsuit in court. It would be about two to months late, two to three months later, I got a financial settlement from VAC therein paid my lawyer, Tom Engel, to take carriage. Now today, he has not finished his investigation to find out how much my lawsuit is worth, though a friend and retted RCMP veteran suggests my lawsuit may be worth $30 million, yet to be determined once my lawyer finishes his investigation. Personally, I suspect it'll be about 15 plus years to settle. And here we have on the Edmonton Freedom Central post in Calgary, what happened was Pat King, he invited Antifa on stage. Antifa member invited up by the real Pat King at Calgary City Hall to speak to the crowd in early 2021. Blah, 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 blah. Why are we uniting with Antifa? That does not happen over people that throw bricks and destroy statues and get away with it. They're a violent group funded by George Soros. We don't unite with that. I'm not going to explain the whole dialectics process here, but essentially what happens here is we have two opposing statements here. All good things come to those who wait. By time and tide, wait for none. Both of those statements contradict, but each have their pros and cons, I guess, and you need to find a middle ground. I'm going to use the pipeline as an example here, and we're also going to talk about the PPC a little bit, Martin. So, this problem here with the pipeline issue is that neither side is actually correct. It's just something meaningful, meaningless for us to fight over because the thing is is if you're able to transport oil and the pipelines are built hypothetically if they leak they might be able to cause environmental damage sure and also passing through certain provinces and whatnot there would be a tax decrease from building these pipelines and you would provide jobs however those jobs are temporary and unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, but taxation is actually theft because you can only tax a corporation or entity. However, the way we be, the way we are taxed is because of our birth certificate, which is an entity or person. So this is some legalese for you. Unfortunately, as well, Max's views, even though they're conservative in nature and happen to meet yours, especially with that of the pipeline, I bet. His views are really just a smokescreen because he does not have any intention of separating from the United Nations when he focused on projects such as NED, the National Endowment for Democracy, as well as the social economy. These are things you should probably invest time to learn about, as well as who Joanne Many is and the role of the Privy Council. I have a couple videos. I can send you if you want, or you can just find them on my channel, as I know you have commented on my line video. So, I just want to say, Martin, you take care of yourself, do what you think is best, but ultimately, I'm sorry, but the only one who's schooling you is Maxime Bernier, unfortunately. You're not schooling the government by paying these taxes and fighting arguments that, unfortunately, are total smoke screens. Now I want to bring this as well to people's attention. I got this sent to me by a friend. Chris Sky used to be part of the Yellow Vest or is, I'm not sure. And as well I stand corrected about previous videos mentioning the line logo on his back. That doesn't look like the line logo. And over here this looks like some kind of Masonic symbol. But I'm not really sure. I just wanted to bring that to people's attentions. But I'm going to sign off now. You guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment.